Martin Tonics. Yes, please. Sir. Brass. He's one of those ritzies. Patrol's ah! coming in! Fire! Cover! Fire! Get cover and fire! Run! This man covered. Good morning, Captain. Major, General Alexander wants to see you immediately. What's going on? I don't know. They're planning something big. Van Hut. Gentlemen. General, Colonel, men. Three divisions. Two American, one French. Going to attack along the Argonne sector. The 77th Division has orders to go in and clean out the Argonne forest. Major Wittersley. Sir, your battalion is going to take and hold Charlevoix Mill. General Alexander, permission to speak freely, sir. Major? I lost a platoon just probing that area this morning. We have to live with acceptable losses, Major. Colonel. Artillery report, sir. Acceptable losses, General? It's suicide to attack the Argonne in force when we are unprepared. Why is it none of my other officers feel this way? Did you study tactics and the art of war in law school? General, we need time to resupply. We are low on food, ammunition, medicines. And whose fault is that? Well, I'm well aware of your civilian politics, Major. Sounds to me like your heart is still in Wilson's too proud to fight. A movement which ill-prepared our country for this war. Or is there something else on your mind? I will lead my battalion into the Argonne. But I doubt if you'll see me or my men again. I guess we'll see what kind of man he really is, our New York lawyer. Captain, check on the replacements. We'll need every man we've got. Yep, we got it. Birds, they can fly halfway around the block. For our gallant young men, compliments to the Ladies' Ottoman Society, Hampshire, England. Hey, we're sending you back, buddy. You look like the run of the letter. Huh? Don't worry. 
worry, Jeremy. You'll be all right. Lieutenant Leak. Yes, sir. I'm Captain McMurtry. Welcome to the 308. Captain, uh, there must be some mistake. I'm supposed to be in the Texas unit. Most of these boys are from New York. I just don't understand a word these city fellers are saying. You don't have to understand them, Lieutenant. They have to understand you. You call off those names, you get them on that truck. Athen Athanasikos. Yoder. 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 Le... Le pa pasta? La pasty. La pasty. La pasty. Uh, Krata Sh. Uh, Krata Shinsky. Hey, how come you guys from New York call everybody buddy? You're not from the city. From Big Park, Montana. Never heard of it. I didn't know they let apple knockers into this outfit. What do you mean by that? Hey, hey, save it for the honeys, huh? What did he say? Well, he thinks uh, he might want to buy a bridge. What bridge? The Brooklyn Bridge. What other bridge is there? What kind of an army is this? Come all the way to France? They stick us with boys from Daisyville? Hey! All right. Oh, my God. We're moving on up. Now that's Sarge. These guys are taking us to the break. The major wants everybody on the line. That includes you two. Gorgeous. We caught them sneaking into a French whorehouse and we just aloused them. They'll be the pretty smell of doughboys in the trenches. <laughs> What's going on, Sarge? We're gonna march in a parade in Paris. So make sure you wear your medals. Find yourselves a hole to crib out of and don't try and do nothing. Hey, here, the turkeys shoot back. Ah, uh, listen up. The crowds usually do not attack at night. The most they'll do is send out some probes or a raiding party. You let me take care of that. Just try to get some rest, some hot chow. I'll teach you a few things tomorrow. Get out the way. Well, this ain't so bad, huh? All you gotta do now is keep your head down. Right, Lucky? Thank you. You new boys settled in? Yeah. Boys described them well. What do you think of General Alexander's plan? I'm a professional soldier. I have the luxury of not having to think about that. I don't want to hear that from you, Captain. I want you thinking all the time how we are going to take the Charlevoix mill without killing all the boys. I'll check on the replacements. Thank you, kid, sir. Lieutenant! Morning, sir. We don't salute up here, Lieutenant. I'm sorry, sir. My officers and men shave every day. I'm sorry, sir. You're sorry about a lot of things. Well, we got up here kind of late yesterday, and... Is that an excuse or an explanation? I'm not interested in either one. I want you and your platoon squared away. Make sure your men have full rations, plenty of ammo, and wear that uniform properly. Put on dry socks if you have them. Straighten your helmet. Lieutenant Leak, welcome to the 308. This is a French chocho. -cho. Chocha. It's a piece of garbage. Don't worry about Leave it. Leave it to henchmen in Hollingshead. Don't worry about mortars, tanks, and artillery. We don't have any of that either. Basically, we're mud crunches. Gravel agitators. Infantry. God almighty! 
That's just some traveling salesman throwing iron cigars, German artillery. Which brings me to stuff. There are two kinds of stuff. Stuff going out, ours. Stuff coming in, theirs. Mud crunchers must learn to judge different kinds of stuff. If you hear something that whistles and knocks, that's Herr Whizbang. Get on the ground. Sometimes Herr Whizbang brings along his lady friend, Minnie Woffer. Minenwerfer. Minnie Woffer sounds like one of those whining hot corn ladies on 10th Avenue. Nah, it's more like the BRT coming out of the tubes. The thing is, they're real hard to judge. So just hit the ground anytime you hear something like that. And don't worry if it hits you. Because they got a lot of other stuff, like Jack Johnson's whimpering willies. GI cans, airplane bombs, machine guns. And all sorts of potato masher grenades. Don't worry about any of it, because it all comes down to that. When you go face to face with a mud crunching hiney bastard, with one of these at the end of his rifle, you better stick it in him before he sticks it in you. That, you gotta worry about. Oh, yeah. Did he say to duck when the stuff sounds like a train? Or was that the one that was hard to judge? And we should get down when it sounds like a tea kettle. Nobody said nothing about no tea kettle. I don't drink tea. What does a tea kettle even sound like? <laughs> Knock it off. Check on Lieutenant Leak. Yeah, that's it. You should get some sleep, Major. Not yet. Captain, remember what we talked about earlier. Good luck tomorrow. Brandon Iron. You West Point? New York lawyer. <laughs> you never know, do you? No, you never do. Boy, we really lucked out, didn't we? I mean, it'd be a hell of a thing to come all the way to France and not have anything to tell our children and grandchildren about. Now, tomorrow, you go over the top. You pick a point straight ahead and you walk to it. And don't worry about where everybody else is. These are good men, they'll follow you. Now you go 10 yards and 10 more. 10 yards? 10 yards at a time. And you can make the whole trip that way. What about the Germans? The boys know what to do with them. You'll figure it out pretty damn quick. And most of my men have never been in combat before. Yeah, we planned it that way. You've never been in a fight, have you? Nothing like this. Well, that's why you walk in front of the troops. See, you get there before they do. That means you'll be the one with the most experience, and you can tell them what to do. Yeah, that's right. Ain't it? You'll do just fine. Fix bayonets! 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 Fix b
Why aren't your troops moving forward, Colonel? General, we're in contact with the enemy all along the front, and most of my commanders need to secure their flanks. They're encountering heavy resistance. You, take this down. Ground, once captured, must under no circumstances be given up in absence of a direct order from the Vision Headquarters. We are not going backward, but forward!
those machine guns and take them out. You got it. Follow me. Come on, go. Where's the cowboy going? He must know something. You think so? He's from Ruleville. He grew up with trees. You ever been around trees? You got trees at Union Square. Those don't count. Come on, let's go. this position. You. You run down there, you tell Lieutenant Leak to bring up the rest of his platoon. Two American and one unberitten French Cuirassier Division greifen an these three points an. Die Franzosen, die zu erwarten gehen, mit Methode vor. Die Amerikaner dagegen, wild und ohne Rücksicht auf eigene Verluste. Unser Reservekorps ist auf dem Weg zur Front. Innerhalb der nächsten zwei Stunden müssten wir Stellung bezogen haben. Wie schätzen Sie die Lage ein? Aus den Erfahrungen von Chateau Thierry und Bellowood wissen wir, dass diese Amerikaner sehr schwer einzuschätzen sind. Sie ziehen sich nie dann zurück, wenn sie sollten. Wie rücksichtslos von Ihnen, Major. Die Amerikaner werden sich nicht freiwillig aus der Agon zurückziehen. Wir müssen sie da rausjagen. Captain. Lieutenant. Now get ready for a counterattack. We have to hold this position. We will. What's your name? Private Laposti, sir. Where'd you learn to run like that? I used to take a shortcut home through a Mick neighborhood. Had to outrun a lot of your Irish confetti, sir. Well, I'm glad one of my cousins didn't bean you with a brick. Now, you come with me. You'll be my runner. Yes, sir. Whittlesey is taking heavy casualties. He needs to withdraw and regroup. Whittlesey, this is General Alexander. Why aren't you attacking? We're isolated. We have no support on our flanks, General. That's because the French and our flanks are ahead of you. You're slowing up the attack, Major. Get your men moving. Are you sure they're on our flanks, General? God damn it, I'm giving you a direct order to achieve your objective, regardless of losses. We must take that ground. The French aren't ahead of Whittlesey. They've been stopped at the Gisela Stellan line. We need him to clog up the middle of our offensive until our flanks can readjust.
Swirsky, sir. Cover those dead soldiers. Don't ever leave them in the open like that again. Yes, sir. We need more medical supplies, sir. Captain, I'm okay. I've spoken with General Alexander. He said the French are ahead of us on our left flank. The rest of our division is somewhere on our right. We've been ordered to take the Charlevoix Mill. Sergeant Gedeke, he thinks he's found a seam that we may be able to get through in the German defenses. Well, it's worth a try. Private Chin. We don't have enough wire to reach our objective, so I want you to set up a well-concealed radio post. I'll use runners to communicate with you. Stay on the line. Tell them we're advancing. We need immediate resupply of food, ammo, water, and medical for the wounded. Yes, sir. I'll take the first group up. I'll send word when it's clear. You got it. Tell Captain McMurtry to bring up the rest of the men. We'll hold here. Let's go. Come on. Lepasti! I was looking for you. You found me. Got an extra one of those? I got a message from the Major. Forget it. The line's cut. I sent three guys out. Not one of them's come back. I heard some rifle and grenade fire. I think the Heinies might be working their way in behind us. You got that? Yeah. What's it like up there? Piece of cake. Got ourselves a chop suey band, couple floor door grills. You wouldn't know what to do with it. I'm a quick learner. Need help taking this back? This is my post. I'll stay here. Take these two. No good for the win. Thanks. Yeah, you do. Tony Hawien. Are you certain that the French are withdrawing? Some of their units are already back in their trench lines. Without the French on our flank, we will have to withdraw. I'll be in my quarters. Order all units to pull back to our own lines. I'm in contact with Whittleson. Lines are cut. Will you keep trying? I want to know where that battalion is. Private Chin's line has been cut. He's trying to repair it. Private Richards! How many birds are left? Four, sir. Get that message out. Not you, Jeremy. You stay with me. But don't worry, sir. This is a good little English carrier pigeon. Now tell him where we are. Das 254. Hessische Reserveregiment berichtet von ständigen Gefechten mit einer amerikanischen Truppe von unbekannter Stärke. 
Wo? An der Schale Wohnmühle. Versuchen Sie, sich zurückzuziehen. Nein, Sie graben sich ein. Das ist ein Wahnsinn. Wenn die da bleiben, können wir sie umzingeln. Jetzt, wo die Franzosen und die Amerikaner bereits aufgehalten wurden. Herr General? Was? Ich habe sieben Jahre in Amerika gelebt. Die Amerikaner halten sich für unschlagbar. Wir müssen diese Einheit zerstören, bevor wir ihre Kameraden nach ihnen suchen. Schicken Sie die Infanteriereserve nach Chalvaux. Heute Nacht, Major Prinz. Ich möchte wissen, ob es Dummheit oder Tapferkeit ist, was diese Amerikaner antreibt. Easy, fella. Calm now. General, Major Whittlesey has made it into the Charlevoix Mill area. Impossible. He wants to know where the rest of our division is and uh, where the French are. He intends to hold as ordered. It looks like our Willisie and his city boys are the only ones to accomplish their mission today. And because of that, they're stuck in the middle of the whole goddamn German army. Not bad for a New York lawyer. One of our patrols heard the crowds bringing up men and equipment. Now they might be trying to come up behind us. We can't let that happen. Have you been able to make contact with either flank? No. Not yet. Now. We need to resupply. The men are out of food, water. They are going through the kits of the dead for ammo. Make sure the dead are covered. Send some more runners back in case that bird didn't get through. Three men, different routes. Where in the hell did you come from? Will C 308, you guys are reinforcements? No, we're K Company, 307th. Trying to fight our way out of here all night. Crowds are closing in behind us. Don't go that way, there's more over there. Where the hell did you come from? I told you the 308. No, I meant what's your location? Where we're supposed to be. Not like you guys wandering around like a John looking for a trick on 14th Street. We were told to take the mill, so the Major took it, and now waiting for a crowd attack in the morning. Well, that is outstanding, Private. I'm sick and tired of playing hide and seek with these hiney bastards, anyhow. Right. You're now point man. You lead the way. Major. Their attack will come fierce and disciplined. They'll wait for the fog to burn off. They don't like to move around in this stuff. At Chateau du Diable, they fed their men while it was so dark. And they attacked us while we were having our breakfast. We don't have to worry about that, sir. My men are down to hard tax, no iron rations, no coffee. You're absolutely right, Lieutenant. It's a good idea. Sir? Start your cooking fires. Find some old coffee grounds and burn them. I want the Germans to think we're having a hot breakfast and we're not ready. Yes, sir. You know, I heard that the Heinies have rest centers in these woods. You know, with bowling alleys, restaurants, and beds with sheets. That's for officers, not for guys like us. They don't have guys like us. You don't know anything, schmageggy. Hey, don't schmageggy me, all right? Hey, who do you think does all the fighting when the Heine officers are bowling, lying in bed, and eating in restaurants? All you Jew boys south of Canal Street have dispositions, Rosen. In Bushwick, we look on the bright side. There's no bright side to living in Brooklyn, Chapalia. I still say they got apple pie and beer over there. Beer? You didn't say they had beer. What kind of beer they got? What difference does it make what kind of beer they got? 
You want egg in it? Hey, that won't be so bad, huh? Forget about it. I'm not sending people to your tailor shop, Rosen. You're gonna spend the rest of your life sewing on buttons. Hey, as long as it's a long life. You hear that? Try the chin. Try the chin. Uh, nothing. a defense in front of the medical area. And don't you let them turn our line. Sir! They're gonna overrun us. Everything, man, and reinforce Captain McMurtry. Go! Tell Lieutenant Shake that he must hold.
There you go, Private. Captain Nelson Holderman. Major Charles Whittlesey. Sir. <clears throat> I hate to say it, Major, but we're not a relief force. We are trying to get back to our lines when the Germans closed in behind us. Well, your timing couldn't be better, Captain. So it seems, sir. But, sir, I got less than 80 men in my company. And if you don't mind me saying so, those Germans don't seem too pleased with you being here. Well, they better get used to it. Yes, sir. I'll try. No. The wounded need water. They can't wait until night. Sergeant Gedeke, post the guard here. Shoot anyone who tries to go for water before we get that sniper. Yes, sir. OK, we're here. It's the German front. The rest of our division is somewhere on our right flank over that ridge. General Alexander said the French are on our left flank. Lieutenant Schenk. I want you to take Sergeant Gedeke in a full platoon and try to join up with the French. Questions? No, sir. Get it done. How come we have to use this French gun? We're Americans. We should have American weapons. You're not American, Krodoshinsky. Sure I am. I took the test. <laughs> what test? The one they give you at Alice Island. Didn't you take it? I didn't have to take a test. I'm good looking. <laughs> Besides, that test doesn't make you American. It makes you a civilian so that they could draft you and then send you here. Hey. Hey, I'm here because I'm an American. You're a Polak. <laughs> Only in America am I a Polak. In Poland, I'm a Jew who has to live in the shtetl and make boots for the cavalry officers. I took the Tesla bus. You know what they said? They said I could be anything I want. Don't you ever say I'm not an American? I took the test. Where's the rest of the platoon? We got ambushed, sir. General Alexander said the French were on our left flank. They ain't there. They've never been there. We're surrounded, Major Whittlesey. And the men know it, sir. If we hold on, they'll hold on. Why do you think the Germans are trying so hard to knock us out of here? Because where we sit, we're a threat to the entire German line. And that's not acceptable to them, is it? No. No, sir. And it's resolved. Our orders are to hold. We stay here. Colonel Johnson, about this lost battalion. Major Whittlesey isn't lost. If we have an idea where he is, we just can't get to him. Whose fault is it? It's nobody's fault. It's the way war is. 
Always has been, always will be. We have a message from Major Whittlesey. They've repelled several German attacks. I expect another one in the morning. He's surrounded. It says he intends to hold until relieved. Yeah. All right. All right. You know, I got a pretty good idea where that sniper is. You do? If he would just put up his head, I think I could get him. What's going to make him put up his head? Some kind of target. <clears throat> Man. Major. Can't get that sniper. He's really good. But we got us a plan. We got to get water for the wounded. Wenn Sie nicht aufgeben, müssen Sie vernichtet werden. Die amerikanischen Streitkräfte greifen ohne Rücksicht auf Verluste an, um diese Männer zu befreien. Wenn Ihnen der Durchbruch in die Argonne gelingt, ist das eine Katastrophe für uns. Wir benötigen Spezialeinheiten. Die Stoßtruppen. Sie werden Ihre Stoßtruppen erhalten, Major. Taking the bandages off the dead so they can be used on the wounded, sir. Well, this one's good. It's only been used on the one side. See if you can find yourself a smoke, Sergeant. I like a smoke. I'd love a smoke, sir, but I'm not gonna go through some dead man's kit just to find one. I can't see how any of this is worthwhile, sir. I don't want to have this conversation, Sergeant. Sir. I was with Blackjack Pershing when we chased Pancho Villa all the way back to Peral. <laughs> you're a good officer, Major, but you're different. In some ways, you're just like these men. This ain't your life. You've got something to go back to. You've always been honest with us, Major. And you really believe holding out here is worth all this? For men like General Alexander, this is a way of life. They don't realize that the world as we know it has been ripped apart out here and is waiting to be buried. You think our boys are going back to their push carts and their sweatshops after this? If we can hold on, we might be able to end this war. I better go check on the men, sir. Looks like we're going to be here for a while. The general wants all batteries to fire at these coordinates in support of Major Whittlesey. Did you confirm the firing grids? Twice. Gunners! Open! Fire! Button up. Lieutenant, how about I go and see if those dead hindies have any water or food on them? Hold your position. I'll send out to the Ritz for a steak and potatoes. Don't forget the bill, Lieutenant. I'll tell them to put in a coal bucket just for you. Get your stuff! It's coming from behind! Whoa! Ha <laughs> ha! 
Stop this, Jeremy. You can do it. Happen to you, little buddy. Colonel, message. Read it. Our own artillery is dropping a barrage directly on us. For heaven's sake, stop it. Whittle see. We'll not see. Cease fire! Cease fire! Get me the artillery! Cease, Cease fire. fire! That is fire. that is an order! Cease fire! Cease fire!
Schnell, schnell, schnell! Warum haben die Amerikaner nicht aufgegeben, die noch eingekesselt sind? Ich weiß es nicht. Ich habe die Ausrüstung ihrer Toten untersucht. Sie hatten kein Wasser, kein Essen. Einer von ihnen hatte gerade noch drei Patronen, ein anderer gar keine. Sie haben keine Munition mehr. Eigentlich müsste dieser Kampf vorbei sein. Ich fürchte, solange Sie sich inmitten unserer Linien befinden, werden die Amerikaner und die Franzosen weiterhin angreifen. Vernichten Sie die Truppe vor Ihnen, sodass wir diesen Wahnsinn beenden können. Well, George, that is quite impressive. Uh, I guess they could take it out, but you won't be able to move around too much without it opening up again. Hell, leave it in. My mother always said I should find somewhere to hang my hat. Put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Deliver me out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For thou art my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust for my youth. Some hot water, bro. Here. Uh. Thank you. Sure. Captain Murchie was telling me uh, you used to be a lawyer before the war. Yes, I was. I uh, dealt with contracts and regulations. You know, Major, um, people like me and Murtry, we're professional soldiers. You know, if we weren't here, we'd be someplace else. But you mean legal affairs, sir, uh, on the general staff. I don't think I'd enjoy working for General Alexander. You don't think we should be here, do you? No. Well, given that's the way you feel, why are you here? <laughs> Life would be a lot simpler if we could choose our duties and our obligations. But we can't. We shouldn't. That's why I'm here. Lieutenant? I'm Major Prince. Can I offer you some dinner? We've got a fine stew. No, thanks. I ate too much for lunch, and uh, I'm stuffed. We'll have a cup of coffee. Smoke? It's a bad habit. I lived in your country for seven years. I must admit that I prefer your tobacco. We got plenty. Come back with me, be my guest for dinner sometime. So you've got plenty of food and tobacco? With your rations for two battalions. We're a little under strength, but that's still a lot of food for 1,400 men. You Americans. You always have so much of everything. No matter. Eventually, you have to surrender. I don't think so. Are you officers so callous? 
You are surrounded. You have no chance for relief. Every night you send out patrols, and every night we kill them. We can hear the cries of your wounded lieutenant. There is no dishonor in surrender. Maybe for you, but my guys are different. What do you mean? What you're up against, Major, is a bunch of Mick, Polak, Dago, and Jew boy gangsters from New York City. They'll never surrender. Never. We know they're near the mill somewhere. We've got to find them. They hit those poor bastards with our own stuff yesterday. We'll find them. It's done. It's not done. Anyhow, why should I share this with you? Because I killed the guy you took her off. Minor detail. I'm not talking to you anymore. Hey, Yoda. What's life like in Daisyville? Big fork. What are you doing on Saturday night? There's a lot to do. Except we don't stay out too late. Because we got church Sunday morning and there's usually a meeting afterwards. Okay, I say Friday night. Friday night? What do you do for fun, Yoda? Hey, how come nobody calls me Bob? Who's Bob? Please, Bob, you dumb Dago. Haven't you ever heard of a first name before? Your first name is Private. You're going to be private all your life, Rosen. You're never going to make corporal. All I want to make is civilian. Sometimes we go camping. How come every time we get an apple knocker next to a tree, they talk about camping? Hey, what do you do when you go camping? Sleep outside and cook over a fire. You wear the same clothes every day and get bitten by cooties? It's part of the fun. You hear that, Rosen? We're having fun. Oh. Hey, I'm not having fun. There you go with that narrow thinking again. You know, you're never going to amount to anything. And you disappoint your blessed mother. You got that right. Hey, Yoda. Give me a kit. Come on. There you go, kid. Knock yourself out. Thanks. Captain, sir, salvage what you can. Yes, sir. Private, pass the word. Just cover them for now and get some rest. Wir sind. Dann wissen Sie auch, wo Ihre Leute sind.
Er hat sie gesichtet. Leg an! something. We got their position. Listen up. The vision is trying to break through to us. We have to let them know exactly where we are. And we've sent out runners every night, but they've either got lost or killed. With this rain, this could be the cover we need. I'm asking for volunteers. I'll go. I almost had a May before we got in this war. I was this close to an indoor aviator job. Elevate operator. Practice my elocution so I can get that job. Going up, call three. <laughs> good morning, good evening. Would have been working with gentlemen and ladies. Would have worn a real uniform and had gold trim down the sides. Hands would be clean, my back wouldn't hurt like I'd be able to push caught dig on the block. What happened? I mean, what happened? This happened. Think that job's gonna be waiting for me when I get back? I'm gonna be pushing a cart around New York like every other walk. We're never gonna catch up to those guys back home. Hey, you come out to Montana after this and we'll take care of you. Are you kidding? I never rode a horse in my life. Then we'll get you a horse that's never been rode. You that for me, cowboy? <laughs> I never been in an elevator. Where does the army find people like you? I volunteered. Oh, buddy. You volunteered? What? What? Me too. You volunteered for this? And we a couple of jerks. <laughs> I want you to check the German dead. See if you can find some food for our wounded. Yes, They 
beschissen. I want you to take a message for me back to your commander. I don't know if I can do that, sir. You prefer being a prisoner? No, sir. First I get caught by you guys, and now I'm delivering messages. Don't that make me some kind of a spy? No. You and your comrades are very brave. I envy your commander, having men like you. Just look down. I want to save lives. Sir. Major. Long, buddy. Auf Wiedersehen, Kamerad. I got a message from the crowd, sir. How do they treat you? Fine, sir. They bandaged me up and gave me some food. Have you heard anything about Lieutenant Leak? They got him prisoner, sir, but he's doing fine. Good. Get some rest, Private. Thank you, sir. Get a weapon. says Private Hollingshead has honored his fatherland by refusing to answer any questions of the German intelligence officer. The suffering of your wounded can be heard in the German lines. We are appealing to your human sentiments to surrender, since it would be quite useless to resist any further in view of the present conditions. Signed, Major Prince. You know what? I think we got him licked. They wouldn't have said it otherwise. How should we answer? Not acceptable. How's that? Never been better. Lieutenant Leake, fine officer. From Texas. We lost over 60 men to our own fire today. We have less than 200 able troops left. I don't know how they keep doing it. Don't sell them short, Captain. Two days ago, we had a Chinese working off field phone, an American Indian for a runner. They're both dead, but that's not the point. These Italians, Irish, Jews, and Poles, they'd never hire me as an attorney. We wouldn't be seen at the same events. But we will never, in our lives, enjoy the company of finer soldiers or better men than we do tonight. Major, I was with Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders. 
And I've never served with a finer officer than you. Do you know your men would do anything? Go anywhere for you? Thank you, George.
you, dumb Dago. I thought you really hurt. This is an opportunity, Rosen. I'm going to a nice hospital with nurses. Did I ever tell you how charming I could be? You'll figure out a way to screw it up. You got that right. Come on. Major Whittlesey. There's going to be promotions and accommodations for everyone. No wonder our airplanes couldn't find this place. Well, your artillery certainly found it, General. Where's the rest of your battalion? Sergeant Gedeke, we couldn't find enough of to bury. Lieutenant Shanks' platoon is somewhere out there. I sent him to link with the French that you said were on our flank, General. are acceptable losses. Not to me, sir. I understand your feelings for your men. You said our flanks were supported, and you ordered my boys to attack. You said supply would catch up with us, which it did not. Is that acceptable to you? Yes, that's acceptable to me. We were able to break through the German line because you held on here. Because you held on here, like a thorn in their belly. Major, you did an incredible job out here. But you had 600 men to worry about, and I had 20,000 sent into action. I have to live with that. I sent for trucks to bring your men back. They've been through hell. You'll never know what they've been through, or what they can or they can't do. They're better than you, General. They're better than me. They always are. Let me take you and your officers back in my staff car. That's not acceptable, sir. I'll stay with my men. I understand. Men, we're moving out. 